friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I just wanted to give you an update on the garden huckleberries that I thought I would try this year because they sounded really interesting. And so the garden huckleberries, and I'll have a few pictures here so you can take a look at them. In case you haven't seen them before or ever tried them, they are a very interesting plant. They look much like a pepper plant as they're growing. And the interesting thing about them is they will branch out all over the place and get heavy with berries and yet they don't need any staking even though they have just a real narrow stalk that holds them up they're actually quite strong it's pretty impressive and they are fun to watch grow they're a beautiful looking berry they get to be a quite decent size for what what we think of as a berry but they're technically not actually a berry and if you were to try to eat one right off the plant which is not recommended but they are very, very bland in flavor. And so, but I've been doing some looking around and saw some recipes and people that grow them and make jams and stuff out of them. And I have to admit, they make a very, very beautiful jam, very beautiful color. And uh, as you can see in the pictures as well as what I'm showing you here. And this was just a real simple, tiny batch. This was the second batch like this that I tried. The first batch I made a little bit bigger and divided it up and tried different things in it. Um, however, no matter what I did with it, the flavor was yuck. I just didn't like it at all. And I'm not a picky eater, so I would think if I don't like it, I think most people wouldn't care for the flavor. Now this one was the better tasting one. I put some homemade vanilla extract in it and fresh squeezed lemon juice and that did help give it a better flavor but still not something i would enjoy it even made the house stink it made my kitchen stink so when i walk outside and step back in here and i can smell that the smell it's just not it's not pleasant it's not horrible it's just not pleasant and just for the heck of it i took some more i picked some more berries so they weren't fully ripe and uh, tried a little, took a little sample of white flannel that had some little flowers printed on it and tried dyeing it to see what I'd come with, up with. Now when I first pulled it out, it was actually a solid color, but very light. So then I took some of the jam that I made and tried rubbing it in there because it came out darker because the berries I picked for this weren't as ripe as the ones for this. So they didn't have near as deep a color. And so you can see in the blotchy spots that the jam actually you know gave it a deeper color so i think if you were to let your berries get very ripe and then pick them you can make a very nice uh really pretty colored dye out of them and um though i can't say for certain how permanent this dye would be uh but i know that when you're dyeing anything that's 100 percent cotton it's going to take a dye very well and so we'll see i'll try washing and drying this and just see what happens and see if it holds the color that it has now so if you are growing them that may be an option that you can do with them and then i was reading that some people actually do use them as a feed for their for their livestock and so that is always an option however considering our limited space and the chickens will kind of eat them but not really i mean they just didn't seem to mind them once they were cooked they won't eat them when they're whole right off the plant but if i break them in half they'll eat them um, you can tell they're not their favorite things. So I'm just certainly not going to be wasting any more space on them. But it wasn't a waste of time to try that. And so this, you know, part of the reason I'm putting this out here is for two reasons. One, to let you know my thoughts on it. And I personally won't recommend it. But if you want to try them for the sheer fun of it, I would say try one plant somewhere off in the corner of your garden and just see what you think because some people do seem to like the flavor of the jam it makes but um just from sites that i found online but personally i think it's gross and a couple other people i talked to said the same thing but but back to it not being a waste of time for me to try is because see now i learned something new in the process and it was still kind of a fun project and uh, definitely very interesting to try. So don't be afraid to try something new in your garden. I just recommend, and if you're not familiar with it, just try growing a very small amount or one plant so you can test it out and see what you think. I know for me, I'm usually like, man, if I think I'm gonna like something, I wanna grow a lot. But then again, if I'm not sure, I would hate to have all these plants taking up space and then 
really hate it and then have it all go to waste. On the other hand, if I end up really liking it and I only tried growing a couple like the mango beets that I tried this year, I only had four total that um, germinated, but I didn't plant very many seed. But um, I'm really going to like the mango beets, but at least I'll know now for next year to grow a lot more of those. I'm going to be switching over to probably the mango beets only, even though most people grow them more as a fodder. So since I like the flavor of it raw, I can imagine it's going to taste pretty good cooked. So I'm going to be giving that a try uh, tonight. And I also will be shooting some more videos on other new things that I've tried that I'm happy with. So be watching for that to come down on down the road. I'm not worried about getting these videos up in time, you know, from the time that I'm harvesting. So it may be two or three weeks later that you're actually seeing these ones because these are just to kind of get you to think about next year what you might want to try growing, especially if you live in a cooler, wetter climate like I do. So we have our own set of challenges that we have to deal with and some things that we grow here are going to do really good for us. Like zucchini does great in climate cycle ours whereas certain types of other squash don't do so great and you may be the opposite you may be able to grow certain types of squash just excellent in abundance while your zucchini might not do so well because it's too hot and dry so we all have our own challenges and i'll be doing another video on what is the best way to garden so be watching for that to come out soon as well okay well i hope you enjoyed my little update on the garden huckleberry so you can you know kind of weigh it out whether or not you think it's worth it to even at least give it a try i say one plant give it a try if nothing else um just to just to see what it looks like see how it grows uh if you have the space if you don't have the space you may not even want to waste the space on that when you can grow maybe more tomatoes or zucchini or thing other things that you really like corn or marshmallow plants well i hope you learned something new from this video thanks for watching take care and god bless Thank you.